In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua, Joshua Selman of Eternity Network, Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Thank him for the testimonies. Thank him for deliverances. Thank him for breakthroughs. Thank him for the awesome things he's doing. And that which he will do tonight. Just 15 days into the new year and he's proven himself mighty. Today is the 16th. And we already are recording mighty testimonies of his faithfulness. Lord, we thank you. Malabo shata brada gadabala labos. Speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We really give you praise. As individuals and as a family of faith, we thank you for the privilege of 2015 and the confidence that we have. We bless you for preservation. We thank you for your faithfulness because we can count on you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we have come. We ask that you will do something mighty tonight. Open our eyes. It's a new season. Bring us into dimensions we never dreamt possible. And Lord, we pray that what you will do this year will dwarf everything, all the years combined. We have come with our hearts open. And Father, we really ask that you help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Good to see us. God bless you. Walk around to 10, 15 people. Just tell them it's good to see you again. Those outside, we are with you. Make sure you participate. Hallelujah.
Hosea chapter 6. Tonight is a prayer meeting. I'll just be opening us up to the prophetic word for the year. First and foremost, I'd like us to understand that one of the things that we fight radically in this place is religion and the traditions of men. We never do things because they are the popular things to be done. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that the giving of prophetic words um, is not just some kind of um, church thing by leaders, you know, to be able to, let's say, our church or our ministry has this and that. No. It's, it's a communication of God's intent for a people and a territory. Hallelujah. To the end that when they understand God's program, and the way he's working. Now, I've had a lot of people in a bid to balance the abuse of prophetic words, have condemned everything and said there's no need for prophetic words. When you understand, you see, that, that is the reason why it is important for us to understand the operation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The operation of the kingdom defines the scope of the way God does his things. When you know God and you understand the system of the kingdom, then you will know why certain things are necessary. Praise the Lord. If you try to just copy, you may not be able to communicate the light that comes from that revelation. But when it is born out of a depth of understanding, then you will be able to guide people and they will receive breakthroughs in their lives. Are you following me now? And the Bible says God made many stars. Have you read that in Genesis? Right? And part of the ministry of those stars is that as the constellations over the earth, they are supposed to help men understand signs and seasons. Praise the Lord. Is that all the volume, please? Um, so if you understand that God made constellations to guide us into understanding times and seasons. That should tell you that the program of God is very specific and very seasonal. Are you getting my point? God does not just do anything anytime. No, no, not at all. Although he dwells in the realm of eternity, right? When it comes to operating the principles of his kingdom here on earth, he subscribed to times and seasons. And so when the prophet will speak to the woman, he say, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. The Bible says, he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit. When? In season. So there is a season. Praise the Lord. And it is important. One of the many things that happen when a season comes is that the graces, the mantles, the understandings and the, the communications of the spirit that will guide people into walking in sync with the program of God for that season is communicated to them. And let me tell you something. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not signs and wonders. You see, the apostolic ministry is a dispensational ministry. The true proof of an apostolic ministry is the ability to, number one, understand seasons. Number two, understand the communications and the revelation that is released to guide men into exploring that season. And then number three, to sustain the utterance in the spirit to interpret those mysteries so that the people of God can both understand, receive, and walk in light of what God is doing. Are you following me now? And so we must be able to understand. The Bible says wise men, they looked at the stars and suddenly they found out that one star was bright. And they knew it was not just a coincidence. Are you following me now? And on the strength of that spiritual advantage, they began to explore. And it took them around a manger. And so prophetic words are not just um, words that must happen January to December. And again, I've had a lot of people talk about January to December and say that it is not, maybe it doesn't make any spiritual sense. 
You see, when I hear talks like this, I, I don't feel bad for the people that communicate these things. It's only an expression of our deficiency of understanding spiritual things. Because if your journey to explore God starts from the Old Testament, you are lagging behind seriously. Your understanding of God must predate the Old Testament. So that it gives you an opportunity to see the consistency of his character through many dispensations. The word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. Are you following me now? And so it means that our dispensation is only in the middle of many dispensations that have gone before us and many to come after us. Is that true? But then the Bible gives us a picture of the consistency of the operation of the kingdom in the midst of these dispensations. For instance, there was a dispensation where the one we call Satan or Lucifer did not exist. Did you know that? Is that true? There was a dispensation where the earth was not a factor. Is that true? When you read the communications of Job, when he invoked God in chapter 38, he said, guard up thy loins as, as, a, as a man and I will demand of thee. He said, where was thou when I founded the earth? Tell me if you know. Were you there when I laid its foundation? When I put the cornerstone? He said, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God rejoiced. So you see that the concept of sons of God is not a New Testament concept. Our understanding about God and the kingdom must predate Genesis 1, predate Old Testament. So that it no longer becomes just an argument between Old Testament and New Testament. You are exploring the consistency of a being that has manipulated things according to his wisdom from infinite dispensations past. The earth, as we know, our dispensation is barely six or 7,000 years. But we carbon date rocks and we see that some are as far as 50,000 years. Is that true? That means there is an old story. And if we do not understand this operation of God, we will find ourselves violating his system. And part of my personal pursuit during my retreat, I was telling the Lord that one of the things that I trust that God will use me to bring to this house is accuracy of alignment. That we will truly gain mastery in the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. And then it will make us to reign truly and experientially. And so the prophetic word is God's program of guidance for, for ministries, for territories. It's important for us to understand the language of God. He speaks um, dimensionally. In fact, he acts dimensionally. It is the dimensional character of God that gave birth to his names. All the names of God represent dimensions. And they, they also represent progressions of understanding him. So every dispensation is supposed to give God a name. And that name represents the scope of their experience with him. The names of God as we know so far represent his dealings and his revelations, the unveilings of himself across many dispensations. So while we lean on the strength of those revelations to gain access to who he really is, there is a lot more that he wants to reveal to us. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 before we come to Hosea. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for light. We thank you for light. Thank you for light. Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion upon over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7 please. I'm just trying to establish a few things that will lead us to understanding the theme and then we'll pray 
Are we there? Verse 7. Okay, it's projected. I think many of us can follow. As many as possible. And the Lord God did what? Formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. There's something I want to pick out here. When the Bible says God formed man from the dust of the earth. Now, Adam was not just the name of that man. Hallelujah. When the Bible says God formed man, that the name of that formation itself is Adam. Are you getting my point now? Now, he said God made man from the earth, the dust of the earth. Now, there is a mystery there that I want you to understand. It doesn't just mean God used clay to make man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because according to ecology as we know, right? You will not be able to dwell in a system if you cannot relate with that environment. Is that true? So God made the spirit of man. But when it, come, it, it, it came to forming the body of man, the Bible says God made man, Adam. What, what it meant was that God used the raw materials of the system to fabricate the body of man. Are you getting my point? So that it will grant him the opportunity to be able to relate freely in this realm. The biological components of man, the psychological components of man were created from the materials within his environment. Are, are you following me now? Praise the Lord. So that there is a consistent interaction between the man, Adam, and the environment. And five elements work together to create man. Number one, light. Number two, wind. Number three, water. Number four, earth. Just follow me. What's number one? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Sound. Please just follow me. I want to establish something. Open our eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these five elements, as we know, look up, please. They are the five elements that govern the interaction of man and his system. Are you following me now? Light, the earth, the food that we eat comes from where? Is that true? The water we drink, without water, you know that we will die. Meaning there is a relationship between the waters and the body of man. Is that true, please? The light sunlight as we know you know that without light there is no life is that true and then sound sound physics has gone so far to tell us a lot of the implication of sound it has been established that we live in a planet that is governed by sound sound hallelujah business people have postulated theories to be able to let us know that your thoughts produce sound that your light produces sound and it takes sound to be able to communicate and all of that. You are listening to me upon the strength of sound. We all know this just to be physics, but I am telling you that all these elements were not of this realm. They were imported to help man become compatible. Just follow me. This is the reason why the description of the Holy Spirit in the Bible has been in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so when the Bible says God made man, what it means is that in the making of this body called Adam, these elements are found. That's why we drink water. Is that true? That's why we need light to see. You cannot see in darkness. You need light to see. You need sound to hear and do a lot of other things. We need the earth to be able to plant our crops. Mysteries. You open the ground and throw a seed and close it. 
and don't supervise it you don't need a remote control something begins to happen that we cannot explain brothers and sisters imagine the mystery of this earth is it living you throw a seed the earth has the resurrection power in it you throw a seed and the bible tells us that that seed dies the earth without prayer brings it back to life i'm showing you the elements of creation without prayer no man can manipulate the earth no matter your fight you cannot be angry with the earth because it is spiritual number two fire or light let's just call it light really but you can put light stroke fire you cannot box light or box fire you cannot monopolize it you cannot do anything it's an entity that is strange it is not scared of anything yet it threatens everything spiritual elements number three water a great mystery great mystery you can't hold it yet it has weight heavier than anything mysteries that surround our world that many of us may never get to really understand and appreciate we see it all the time what is the relationship between your body and water brothers and sisters animals take water plants take water hallelujah meet a man who is dying of thirst give him water and he's rejuvenated what does it do to him it's more than biology it's more than biology hallelujah and then another mystery is even how the rain falls hallelujah that vapor rises without the eyes of man seeing condenses in the atmosphere purest form by itself distills itself and begins to empty itself upon the earth mysteries that surround our world and the bible says man was made of these elements meaning if you corrupt any of this element it will translate into the corruption of man are you getting what i'm saying you now see the reason why demonic spirits use these five elements for their operation satan is called the prince of the power of what that's we is that true we see the holy spirit manifesting as the wind we see the holy spirit manifesting as water we see the holy spirit manifesting as light or fire now I, i'm just helping you to appreciate the fact that it's not just that we we stumbled across these things and we found them being used in scripture they are in they are not the only elements are you following me now it is only because they are the elements that are important for the existence and the functionality of man there are many other elements but we know those five just like we have five senses is that true but those are not the only senses now i know that people have taught great men like papa hagin and the rest they've written books and they've said we also have spiritual five spiritual senses of course you can look at the level and the the, the dispensation with which you wrote those revelations but now we know better it cannot be that there are five senses there are senses as infinite as the wisdom of god that's why you can receive certain communications of the spirit that you cannot explain physically because the, the equivalent sense to help you interpret it is deficient. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God made man to interact with these things. So when I drink water, when I walk with the earth, when I take advantage of the illumination from light, right? and I, 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 I walk with these elements, they sustain my health, they sustain my vitality, and they help me to function in the earth. And it so happens that these elements, because they were imported from the Spirit, when the Holy Ghost begins to function with this man, Adam, he also comes in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he can manifest as light or fire. When he manifests as fire, it's a revelation of his dimension. 
to be able to achieve certain things. When he manifests as wind or sound, he says that I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost was coming, a mighty sound, a rushing wind. Right? And so we see these operations of the Spirit. The prophet said, O wind, breathe upon this slain. And the Bible says the wind came and entered them. And suddenly, the flesh, the sinews that came, came from the earth. It, I will cause sinews to come and cover the bones. Are you following me now? And so the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in the similitude of these elements. That's why when you go to a herbalist, he will still use these five elements to concoct everything because he's working with man. Is that true? When you go, I've, I've, I've taught us already, but then let me just share it. The principle of reflection, we call it, that everything in creation should reflect its maker. Is that true? And because man is the hallmark of God's creation, everything in creation should be reflected in man. Is that true? And so I told you that the eyes of man was made from what? Water. Right? The similitude of vision. The same way that you go to a herbalist and it does incantations on water and suddenly that water becomes an eye and it starts seeing through it. Right? I told you that the hair of man was made in the similitude of grass. Is that true? That's why you can barb it and everything, you know, that similitude. The veins of man were made in the similitude of roots of plants. Is that true? The bones of man was made in the similitude of stones. That's why they can stay long even after, just like the stones. Are you getting what I'm saying? The body of man, this flesh was made from the earth. That's why it is compatible with the earth. When men die, where do we bury them? Not in the sky. We don't just hang them somewhere in the sky. Is that true? We bury them. It said, for dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return. Is that true? That means you are dust. So when the Holy Spirit begins to function, he functions in these dimensions. Watch this. Notice the coexistence of wind, light, water, and all of this to keep you alive. Can you choose water and say there's no need for light? Is that true? You need all of these dimensions. Now, that's how it is spiritually. Every season, because rea realize that God is building another spiritual man. Is that true? He says, we all as living stones. There is a spiritual house God is attempting to build. And the name of that house, when completed, is called the bride of Christ. In her perfection. God is walking, molding. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Like an architect trying to build a mystery using the bride to make a bride. That bride that is spotless. And so based on that creation, God is using us and forming every element that needs to be in us so that as a church, we can be presented as that apostolic bride. Are you following me tonight? So the Holy Spirit reveals himself in different dimensions after the similitude of these elements of creation. And every one of his dimensions comes to initiate an understanding about God and to in initiate a certain kind of function. Just like water. Water does not just do what light does. Water does not just do what wind does. But without wind, water cannot move. Is that true? There's, there is a coexistence. When I began to seek the Lord this year, and for the prophetic word, he said, I will reveal myself to my people as the rain. The rain. Not just water, the rain. That caught my attention. For me, I was very, very excited. Very, very excited. Because I know a bit about water. And I, I have studied a bit. But when the Lord began to give me that word, I braced up, I was excited I received it into my spirit and very briefly I will just share with you certain things 
that will help us to align with the prophetic word of God. Hosea chapter 6, please. From verse 1 to 3. Hosea chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. Verse 2. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Verse 3. I want us to read it together. One to read. And he shall come to us as how? Hold on. He said, and he shall come to us. Meaning this is how he has chosen to reveal himself. To make himself manifest in the midst of his people. Not a rain. He says, and he shall come to us as the rain. A combination of the former rain and the latter rain. Now I don't want to go into the whole theology of the arguments about former rain, um, latter rain and all of that, that's not our point of interest tonight. But it's just for us to know that God wants to come and manifest himself this year, 2015, as the rain. The rain. The rain. What then is this rain? Very quickly. What is the rain, really? I wrote a few things here and I'll just read them out so that we can have some notes. The rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Spirit. The rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon people and territories that is responsible for activating certain spiritual realities. The rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. upon people and upon territories responsible for activating certain spiritual realities there are different spiritual realities because every dimension of the holy spirit helps you to access certain dimensions hallelujah when the holy spirit is revealed as fire there is a dimension of him that we can access on the strength of that revelation when he's revealed as rain or water or dew or whatever it is in that similitude when the holy spirit is revealed as oil when he's revealed as a dove when he's revealed as all of these things they all attempt to communicate certain dimensions of his operation and dimensions that can be accessible hallelujah there are seven seven dimensions or expectations I want us to have as the Holy Spirit reveals himself as the rain. Seven things happen in the life of any man and any territory when the Holy Spirit is permitted to reveal himself as the rain. We'll just run through it very quickly. Number one, when the Holy Spirit reveals himself to a people as the rain, there is an unusual dimension of soul winning. Unusual dimension of soul winning. Because harvest is tied to rain. Harvest is tied to rain. Hmm. Harvest is always tied to rain. He said in Isaiah chapter 32 from verse 15, he says, until the spirit be poured upon us. So he uses the language of the rain until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and then that vine will multiply and become a forest so one of the things that happens to a people or a territory when the holy ghost begins to manifest as the rain is that there are unusual dimensions of soul winning and transformation transformation we had our brother who came here and shared how that he had never seen me i don't know how, how probably without exaggeration thousands of people who say i have never seen you most people outside of this circle have seen me in either dreams or visions 
You see that? The rain. Unusual dimension of soul winning. And so that's one of the things we expect to see this year. That there will be unusual dimensions. That rain will pour on people. You see, when the rain begins to pour, it does not select who to fall on. Is that true? When it falls, it falls upon everyone and you must carry a trace of it. It will wet anybody, it will wet any car. That's the dimension of the spirit. So he will fall on unusual people. He will fall on business people. He will fall on students. He will fall on workers, unbelievers. Hard, you will see hardened criminals come to Christ. People who vowed by themselves, God forbid, over my dead body to be born again. You will see them come mysteriously. And then you will know that the rain fell on them. Hallelujah. People who heed that all have refused to accept Jesus Christ. You will argue with them. They will say, look, if, if Jesus is real, why are pastors this? You know, all those, all those arguments they bring. You will see them walk in dimensions. I tell you, you three o'clock, you will see them come to stand at Koinonia. Shaking, they cannot explain what brought them. The moment you see that, know that it is the rain. Because every time a rain will fall, you will see clouds. There is a sign. There is a rain. And that rain will fall. It will bring... I'm not talking of salvation of one leg here today and two legs out. You say, I had it. No, 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 no. Genuine that all your legs will be stationed and established in the kingdom. That's why I said so winning and transformation. You know, I've questioned a lot of what people call born again. Right? If you truly meet with this rain, there must be transformation. Hallelujah. All of those kinds of what I used to do before, I'm still doing it again after 10 years. I'm, you did not meet with the Holy Spirit. If you truly meet with the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of the living... A donkey met with him and started talking. No rehearsals. Look, let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost meets with you, something must change. He has nothing to do with whether you have faith or not. There is an imprint. When rain comes, it does not ask you what kind of material. You live and there is an evidence. Have you seen rain come and then there is a nice lady who is wearing, um, what they call it, those you people's dangerous shoes that, that is pointed, you know, and she's trying to just run. The rain is whipping her. No regard for whatever she, whether it's with one or your natural hair or whatever hair, whether rain just comes. Lord, send that avalanche. We are tired of discussing with certain family members that will not change. In this season of the rain, mm. the moment he's kicking the car, the car will not kick again. And the only, he can't open the door and he will hear a voice. And he will say, how long will you keep running away from me? Personal salvation. Genuine personal salvation. I want you to believe. Look, let me tell you, there are seven things. This is number one, but this is major. Every one of us must participate. Cooperating with this rain. Because when, when rain falls, there are certain people who can... How many of you have seen rain fall and then some people bend their zinc strategically to make sure that water enters some vessels? That's how some of us will be. You will say, this rain is almost reaching my uncle. Oh Lord, where is that zinc? You must tilt it to touch him. Oh no, look, let me tell you. There will be massive salvation this year. It's called anakazo. A compelling evangelism. Not, not too much of drama and they are asking you, did you quote it correctly? Do you know that? That means you are not a serious believer. And then what would have been a, a simple encounter becomes three hours of foolish argument. The Bible calls it vain talk. Right? You keep arguing whether is this and that. Should this person do this? Does your church do this? When the rain comes. When the rain comes. Some of you, all you will need to tell somebody is come. Jesus looked at them and said, come. No argument. That's how they got up. Because that rain comes with it a dimension of the spirit. Do you believe that? Number two, 
When the rain comes, we will experience increased dimension of love for God and passion for spiritual things. Listen to me. Every time rainy season comes, it supplies energy upon the farmer to go to the farm. Is that true? When he sees the rain, he's excited. When the rain falls, every one of us, every one of us must fall in love with God. It comes, it's a dimension of the Holy Spirit that all of a sudden makes Jesus become a priority in your life. So it's not just the issue of being fanatical. He emphasizes the priority of the things of the kingdom, the house of God, evangelism, prayer, your, your passion for spiritual things come alive. Jesus must become a priority in our lives this year, not an option. Many of us love the Lord, but there are many distractions. Jesus is not a priority to many of us. But this year, this season of the rain, hallelujah. Listen, listen. Let me tell you one of the things that the rain does. The rain washes away filth. There are many things that have covered our eyes and our lives that would stop. Some of us love God, but there is a devil seated on our face called our mouth that will not allow us to serve God well. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your spirit wants to serve God, but your mouth, this mouth is, is, is an empire, is Babylon seated on your face. And if you don't tame it, let the rain wash away that thing, that filth. There are many of us, our lives, this is the year when you say, Lord, let this rain come. During my retreat, I said, Lord, I really want to love you. I don't want to fake it. I know that I love you. You know, people send me a text and say, may God give me one tenth of your love for God. I said, really? You've not seen anything yet. Madly in love. For some of you, may God give you the kind of love you have for women. May God convert it to be love for him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two thousand and fifteen, may it happen. No, we're here to enforce it tonight, because see, the way many of us love things that are not God, money, reputation, women, men, intellect. Now, I'm not against all of those things, but I am telling you. Remember. Part of the things we do here is to make sure we strangle every idol to death. There is only one that deserves our praise. We will lay down our idols and thrones we have made and all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow. I will bow. To you, to no other God but you. Listen, can I tell you one strategy of the devil? One strategy of the devil to, to filter or draw away our love and passion for God is activities. Say activities. That was the strategy Pharaoh used. When Moses was coming to connect them back to God, Pharaoh said, ah, it's because you are free. I've not occupied you enough. That's why you even have time to consider an exodus. He said, occupy them. What I was giving them free, let them look for it. And that's one thing that the devil is using to destroy our generation. Ask an average young man, why are you busy like this? Four o'clock, you are awake. Sorry, I don't have time. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Lord, I thank you. You are, I mean, if you were not alive, I wouldn't have woken up. Now that I'm awake, I really thank you. And you're on your way moving. We are on the go. We have fast food. If you are hungry, enter quickly. Five minutes, you are out. This kind of life will never produce passionate people. There must come a time.
time in your life where you must define who is worth your time. Ha! You've won my heart, oh God. You've won my heart. Don't let Nigeria fool you. You are not the first to be successful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ask Abraham. Ask Isaac. Ask Solomon. These were men who pursued God. But with that pursuit, they were successful. Take away that useless theology that the devil has given Nigerians. That if you don't get up and hustle and push, if one door closes, force another one to open. What do we call it? Hustling. In this year of the rain, may God help you to know what matters. You have only 24 hours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All I want is you. There are many of us, we don't care about the house of God. The, the house of God, come for koinonia, eh, oh yeah, let me just drag myself and come, you know. And you come and you are waiting for everybody to tell you thank you. This is the year you tell that devil, if you, if you took advantage of my life in 2014, in this year, I mean business with God. Hallelujah. This is the year to throw away that small jotter that fire has burned half of it and buy a good hardcover exercise book and say, Lord, I mean business. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. It says, after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. This was my cry during the retreat. I said, Lord, I don't love you enough. I searched my life to find out all the things that are still in the remaining time. And I said, Lord, I will give you time more. Because intimacy is a function of time. It's not just about quoting koinonia. Intimacy is highly time dependent. For the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Spend time. In this season of the rain, many of you, let me tell you, you will find out 4 o'clock, 4.30, the Holy Ghost will wake you. Mm, sleep goes away. No matter the tiredness, you know that is the season of the rain. And you get up and play worship songs. I want more of you. Some of you, this season of the rain will take you back to what you used to do that brought grace upon your life. That you have thrown away. There are some of us here, especially the ladies, you know what you used to do. When it was not the issue of men. Huh? When it was not the issue of beauty. Before you rediscovered yourself, that depth of passion of us don't wake up in the morning again you sleep by 8 o'clock you wake up by 9 o'clock spiritual carelessness you don't care you don't pray for 2 weeks it's none of your business you check the way you drop your note on your bible last koinonia friday that's how you pick it next koinonia you just say lord I thank you speak to me look it must change in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let there be passion some of us were lied to our roommates. Right now, they are the ones advising you. Huh? Look at how spiritual drought came and stole your fervency. But no more. I said no more. In this season of the rain. Ah, cold. It's too cold. I can't serve God. Or the trouser I wanted to wear is not there. I wore blue last week blue this week. I can't go for koinonia. You are not serious. When this rain pours on you, you will pick up that trouser and wear. And say, whether, whether it's blue or black, I want more of you. Priorities that will change. Your priorities must change. You went to make your hair. They made half. They've not made the other half. Carry cap and cover it. Come for koinonia. See, Ask people and know the silly reasons why they refuse to come to the house of God. Very silly reasons. Someone say, I don't have transport. But let the guy say, oh yeah, come, let's talk. You, you, there is energy. Or, well, or the lady, 
says, okay, I'm waiting for you at 90s. See the guy say, I'm coming. When he was talking, it was around dark, but you will be walking. Lord, I receive strength. I cover ground. And you cannot come to the house of God. In this year, 2015, may God give us passion. Oh, let, let this rain come. And let people see the difference between them and God in your life. Are you getting my point? Let the guy know you love him, but when he comes to God, he is truly secondary. Without apology. What, if you put anything and God, don't even ask me which one. Anything that is not God has lost, including myself. If I'm secondary to God, what makes you think you will be primary? More of you. More of you. More of you. Jesus, more. Sing more of you. Sing more of you. Sing more of you. More of you. Jesus, more of you. Jesus, more of you. Yes. It's called an awakening. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Please, you need to talk to your neighbor. Say, Wake up this year. Reignite your passion for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sit down five minutes prayer. Oh Lord, I thank you. No, 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 no. You have to give God time. You have to give God time. Say, I will give God time. He will become a priority in my life. Yes. Nothing else matters. Look, let me tell you something. I was talking with my auntie. She lost her, her son, eldest son, the one who would, you know, be the next of kin. And when I went to her, um, when she heard I was in ministry, in her mind she said, ah, this young man, according to her, she said, this young man, so intelligent. You mean that's what you really want to do with your life? You know, people make it look like, ah, you mean this is it? Now, but when her son died, when I went to her, she said, if I knew, I would have served God like you in the days of my youth. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Whether you believe in immortality or not, we are not going to be here forever. Just settle that in your mind. Is that true? Jesus said, I must walk the works of him. Five minutes without breathing, nobody will ask you all the PhDs you got. Are you aware of that? Nobody will ask you what your CGPA was. Please let me remind you. Nobody will ask you whether you, you got married or not. As important as these things are, if you have not sat down to think about them, I want you to know that there is only one thing that will matter at the end of your life. We used to sing a song um, when I was in secondary school, one Anglican song, only remembered for what we have done. You know the song? Very powerful song. So, by and large, hear me, if you keep distracting yourself and not giving God time, everything that you are giving time for now, will it secure your eternity? That's the question. You are giving your whole life to a man, yet you cannot give God. A man you cannot trust. A man who can come and say, I've changed my mind. Kai, I've changed my mind. A, a, a lady who can come and say, you know, the only constant thing in life is change. Yet you say, I give you my all. You even say it happily. Please don't laugh. I came with the fire from my retreat. Make sure you are not just laughing carelessly. I'm communicating something very serious. Passion. That you must not come for koinonia for people to see the passion. People will look at Morgan and say, what is this? This fire you have. Why is it just God all the way? God in lecture theater, God everywhere. Are you this fanatical? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, listen, if you are ashamed of me, I've seen people die, brothers and sisters. I've had the privilege to, to, to go and minister to bereaved families. I've prayed for people in hospitals. I have seen in my little life the vanity of life. That's not to make you not to get up, but I know that I plan to spend my life on what matters. That at the end of my life, when I stand before him, let me carry mantles of souls and say, Lord, I spent my life. I spent my life to the last serving. One general that we honor forever, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who cheated death, left and right front and back there are men who have cheated death this year please let there be an awakening we are going to pray we are going to pray for some of us it is to return to your first love ha ah. don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out, light the fire again, I need your discipline. I'm crying out, light the fire again. Lord, don't let my life go cold. Let me not be busy doing ministry. And forget my relationship with God. Let me not be busy doing ministry, ministering, traveling around, and everybody is shouting Apostle Joshua Selman. Whereas my personal intimacy with God is faulty. See, let me tell you, men can clap for you, but this is the year you say, Lord, I want to be genuine. I'm tired of pretense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm tired of people looking at me like a Christian, thinking that I love God. Walking based on yesterday's anointing, yesterday's oil, walking based on the applause of yesterday, whereas my today is 40. Number three, when the rain falls, it brings unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. This is one of the things that we are going to be experiencing in this year of the rain. Unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Please media, you help us. We have to really be fast. Deuteronomy 32 verse 1 and 2. Let me show you a scripture. Deuteronomy 32. Mambroski, brother, Shilaba. Okay, let's just watch. Okay. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. Read together. How? My doctrine, my mysteries, I will give you certain revelations, and it will come in the similitude of the rain. It will, it will be an avalanche. It will come in abundance. Hallelujah. My secrets, my mysteries will come upon you as the rain. No matter how the drizzle is, if you channel it well, it can fill buckets. It says, my doctrine shall drop. It says, my speech shall distill as the dew. Abundance. Some of you will open Genesis and you'll be reading Genesis for months because you will see things there that you never saw. And God said, that will be the revelation you'll be exploring for two weeks. And God said, a sound planet that it moves with words. And God said, my doctrine, my mysteries will fall upon Koinonia like me. So that you will begin to see the puzzles join together. That these are the keys. These are the operations of the spirit that activate certain dimension of kingdom realities. 
Brothers and sisters, hear me. The Bible says it has been given unto us to know. The word know is the word intercourse. The same word like a man knowing his wife. It has been given unto us to intercourse. That's the word epignosis. A state where you know a thing by becoming that thing. Not just by hearing about it. It's an operation that only exists in the spirit. So in the spirit, if I want to know how this speaker is, I will have a feeling of becoming it. Accurate knowledge. My doctrine shall come upon you like the dew. So that many things we have believed that are confusing us and stopping us from experiencing the reality of God. When there is an avalanche of access to the mysteries of God. Some of you will begin to find out what is responsible for the tragedies and the operation of darkness in our families and you will know what to do. He said Jesus himself knew what to do. This year may you know what to do. Because in the kingdom we arise and we shine when light comes. We reign upon the strength of light. Not when your light is available, when it comes. When it comes. He said, they that have sat in darkness have seen a great light. A great light. A great light. A great light. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. There is a God that can show men mysteries. There is a God. We are going to contend for mysteries. We'll look at verse 19, 22 and 47. Long story. A king had a dream and forgot it and said, if you don't tell me what this dream is and the interpretation, I will kill you. Very simple. Hallelujah. The king had a dream and he forgot it. And he gathered all the soothsayers and wise men and said, I don't know what you will do. Go and invoke whatever you can invoke. But if you don't tell me this dream, I guarantee you, you will die. And the Bible says, Daniel asked for time. He said, give me time. Everybody say time. Hmm want revelation god is not mr biggs or chicken republic he said lord as i'm going just let it come I, I i didn't have time to prepare now that i'm going for the meeting let it just drop as i'm coming don't take the mercy of god for granted it takes time daniel told the king he said i can tell you but i need time because it's in the place of intimacy that you experience that rain and he said then was what the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. In the night, while men were snoring and sleeping, the rain came. And when it came, he said, Daniel, this is it. Sit down, you are about to watch a movie. And he saw Nebuchadnezzar sleeping and he saw what happened. Verse 22. This was Daniel acknowledging God. He said he revealed what? The deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. And, the, and light dwelleth with him. Brothers and sisters. May God show us the things that are hidden in darkness. That have been responsible for the stagnation of our lives and our families. As this rain falls. Let, let it expose things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's just leave verse 47. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible makes us to understand that the Holy Spirit is able to access the mind of God. Have you read that scripture? That the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the things that are in the mind of God. Right? Scripture makes us to understand that no man knows the heart of a man save the spirit of that man. And the spirit of God has access to the mind of God. And he's able to reveal it to us. He said, but God had revealed them to us. How? By his spirit. That will manifest himself as the rain. He said, for the spirit searched all things. Yea, the deep things. May God grant unto us uncommon revelation. In this year of the rain. Number what now? Number four. When the rain falls. One of the things that we experience is multiplied dimensions of spiritual power and the anointing. Multiplied dimensions of spiritual power. 
When you plant a seed and bury it, the moment the rain falls, that seed begins to push above the earth against gravity and it comes out. Spiritual power. A Christianity that does not demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit is child's play. There is only one language that is understood in the realm of the Spirit and is a language of power. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, I was watching the, a, a, a lovely cartoon yesterday. I don't watch most of, uh, I don't have time self to even watch cartoons. But one caught my attention. Pharaoh, Moses in Egypt, and I mean, it was, it was, it was well animated. I was so touched. Better than many of the things we have watched before. I mean, very, very, very nice and very graphic. When Moses got there, there was no room for long stories. The rods were speaking. This is the year, by the grace of God, where there will be a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. This is a place of power. There must be miracles upon miracles breakthrough upon breakthrough we must it must be evident that the rain is falling if you believe that say amen in the name of jesus christ resulting to an outbreak of miracles signs wonders breakthroughs healings it's impossible to have the holy spirit reveal himself as the rain and will not have healings and miracles and it will start this night this night, not next week, this very night. Hallelujah. Some of you, you, you carry the atmosphere of this rain and step into places and you see the sick get healed. Look, we need to restore the church to the signs that characterize that God is at work and at, alive in people. We trivialize the place of the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have a lot of arguments in the body of Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of God, this place will become a habitation of not just his presence, but his power. Let the sick come and be healed. Let the oppressed come and be delivered. Not, not long stories. There are many things in our lives that do, doesn't require counseling. We need a head-on collision with the power of God. And it solves the problem once and for all. Some diseases will die a natural death when they meet the power of God. He said the yoke shall be destroyed, not by oratory. He said because of the anointing. When the rain falls upon us, there will be levels of grace. When God was showing me little visions of things that will happen in the year, and I saw some of the things, I said, my goodness, oh Lord, do these things. Let nothing restrict you. Look, Brothers and sisters, you will see a demonstration of the power of the Spirit this year that will shock you. Not just from here, not just from my life, from your own life. From your own life. Your hands will do mighty things. Look at your hands and say, this year, you will do mighty things. Please, I want you to believe it. Look at your hands and say, this year, you carry an unusual unction. And you will do mighty things. So we'll see multiplied dimensions of grace. Multiplied dimensions of miracles. Signs, wonders. Manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Next point. When the wind, when the, the rain of the Spirit falls upon us. Now take note of what I'm about to share. It will bring unusual dimensions of wealth, prosperity, and abundance. For sure. Rain. Now, agriculturally speaking, rain is tied to abundance and fruitfulness. Is that true? And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me again and again, very notably, that will happen in the lives of people is an avalanche of prosperity. I know that many of us have had these things again and again, but please, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Prosperity. I believe in prosperity. Absolutely. Joel chapter 2, please. For time's sake, we'll just look at verse 24 and 26. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. It says, and the floors shall be full of wheat. 
and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It says, and ye shall eat in what? Plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people in terms of finances shall never be ashamed. Do you believe that? God is going to change the stories of people. Look, it will be, the Bible says, when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion. For many of us, it will be like a dream. People will look at you without the assistance of any uncle or auntie. You will rise. It will be a mystery. God will use you to prove that the rain has fallen upon your land. Genesis chapter 2. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. 2 verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5. Listen, it says... And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. He said, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground. When you read the verse before it, it says how that there was no vegetation. Why? Because the rain had not come. When the rain falls, fruitfulness begins. Immediately. Immediately. There is a relationship between that dimension of the spirit and your prosperity. And I want you to believe it. I have prayed this into my own life. I have received it. I have believed it with all my heart. This year I will not argue with the word of God. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. Leviticus 26 from verse 4. I'm giving us this scripture. Let's hurry up and we'll pray. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. It says, then I will give you rain. When? And this is the season. The Lord has spoken to us. He said, I will give you rain in due season. And what will be the result? And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May that happen for somebody. Brothers and sisters, I have learned in my little life that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Hallelujah. Joseph slept in one night as a servant, as a slave, a property of Egypt. He woke up the next day as the man in command. That would be somebody's story. When the gentleman shared about his UK, um, you know, um, the blessings of the Lord. In my mind, I said, that is a drop. We are talking of an ocean an ocean of the, the avalanche of what God will do. Men will look at you and say, whose head did you cut? You will say, no. No. It's the rain. It's the rain. Do you believe this? Or has your suffering of the past blinded you and say, it's like that. It came like that. Do you not believe? That God is able to make a table in the wilderness. He said they limited God by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? A table. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. Just look at that and then we'll touch on the remaining. I have to run. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. I just want to give us scriptures. I want you to read if you believe. One to read everyone. What will be the result? It didn't say your neighbor's corn. There is, there is a, listen, there is an apportioning for you. Listen, this year is not the time you sit down and clap for others and say, you mean God did it for you? Hallelujah. You must insist. Please believe. If you've never believed God for anything, why don't you connect and believe this year? He said that thou mayest gather thy corn. And what? And what? Three things. Your corn, your wine, and your oil. When the rain falls, your corn, plenty, 
plenty. He will cause you to experience it. What else do we expect? Two more, right? Number six, supernatural restoration. When the rain falls, in Joel chapter 2, the coming, the outpouring, the rain and the spirit brought about the restoration. He said, and I will restore to you the years. Verse 25 of Joel chapter 2. And I will restore to you the years. I will restore to you opportunities. I don't care whether it was carelessness. I don't care whether it was armed robbery. I will restore. Everybody shout restore. restore. We have come to enforce it. The Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore. 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 He said, turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. For many families here, that the devil has made it look like his Ichabod in this year, when the rain falls, you will see a tree that was dry. You almost want to use it for firewood. God will say, don't cut it. At the scent of water, at the scent, he said there is hope for a tree, even if it be cut off, at the scent of water. I'm prophesying to someone here. It looks like you are in a, a state in your life. Some of us think we have messed it up. There is no way. There is no human way, but that's when God is needed. If it's still possible for you, God will be resting. But when it's impossible, he will arise. And I'm speaking to someone, the way God will change your story this year, it will shock you. God, one by one, God will restore everything to the latter. Even what you said, God, is not necessary. God will say, no, 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 I'm too committed. Restoration. Joy and peace. Restoration. For the days of tears. Restoration. Academic restoration. Financial restoration marital and relational restorations mm. he said rejoice not over me my enemies he said though i fall yet i will rise while you are sitting down discussing that i died jesus died for only three days while you are discussing they say no he has risen you are talking about a man who only died for 72 hours some of you you have been subjects of discussion in your family they looked at you and said look at huh? it's better to even be an idol worshiper you are mocking god but this year my father will arise. You will see God revisiting things that happened 10 years ago and say, I must prove a point. It's not necessary, but they have mocked my name in your life. Do you believe this? I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. God is able to restore. I'd like you to say God is able to restore. And there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh There is nothing you can do, and there is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh Lord, see him wiping your tears in this year of the rain. You can't cry forever. That will be your song when God changes your story. Let men talk. Don't try to defend yourself. There is a defender, the God of your salvation. Oh Lord, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh I 
have learned in my little life that you don't cry forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just let the rain fall. <laughs> when that rain falls, you will see restorations that you cannot account for. You can't even explain how it happened. Joseph, how did you become a prime minister? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is that I woke up that morning and by evening I was on a throne. Esther, how did a villager like you become the king's wife? I don't know. I didn't instigate Vashti to look for trouble. All I know is that the rain fell. See, when I say the last point, you will know what I'm saying. This year, there will be the falling of many and the rising of others. Trust me. Many who have made mouth and concluded on others, you will see God take people that you mocked and sat down and they will rule you. you <laughs> be careful as you speak over people. Because brothers and sisters, there are others who have even said, God, take my life. And God said, are you joking? Wait and see how I, I, I will write my name upon your life. And any man that sees you will know that God is able to restore. He says, son of man, can these bones live again? Can these bones live again? He said, only thou knowest. Only thou knowest. The rain will fall and things will change in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The last thing that the coming of the rain will do is that the rain brings judgment upon people and territories who oppose God's agenda. Oh yes, there will be a rain. I told you that there will be the falling of many and the rising of many. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Let's hurry up. After that, we'll look at chapter 19 verse 24. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. It says, For yet seven days I will cause it to do what? To rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made, I will destroy off from the face of the earth. So, the rain does not just come to bless. There is a dimension of the rain that brings judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When it, when it was time to judge the world, it was water. Rain came and caused judgment. There are people who have sat down and believed that they hold the destinies of people in their hands. This year, they will receive of that rain for sure. For sure, that rain will come. Listen, two things happened when it began to rain in Noah's days. It was killing all the people who were laughing at Noah. I said, Noah, for how many years? Noah, we were young, oh. We were young. Those days when you were 70 years, you were a teenager. They say, well, we're teenagers. You were. Now, 120 years, you are still building an ark. Noah said, I know. 120 years ago, he told me rain will fall and it will still happen. And when it was time, God said, Noah, enter your ark. I will close the door by myself. When he closed the door, he said, rain, you are free to come. While the rain was killing others, it was lifting another man's ark. Same rain. Are you seeing that now? The rain was drowning noisemakers and those who have laughed at what God can do. But it lifted the ark of Noah and kept it on a mountain called Mount. Ararat. Hallelujah. That rain. Many of you will hear this year that the evil doers that have refused, they, they are 95 years old, they say we won't die. We are sitting to see how you will get married when that rain falls. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, there are men who have exchanged their life for others. Is that true? In this year of the rain, God will bring to justice. I tell you, it's, it's, there is no prayer of mercy. It's called a written judgment. It's a judgment that has been stamped and it must be executed. Hallelujah. The rain bringing judgment. Two scriptures, you can just write it quickly. Genesis chapter 19 from verse 24 and Exodus chapter 9 verse 23. Genesis 19, 24 Exodus 9.23, you don't have to project it. But all of these things talk about rain. 
One time the Egyptians made noise against God. Rain came. Rain of hailstones, brimstones. It came and landed upon all of them. There will be rain this year. In this country, Nigeria, there will be rain. I saw it in visions. There are people you see bragging today. They will not see August this year. I'm telling no, 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 no. It's, it's the truth. They will die, not just, they will die shameful deaths. God will sign upon their death that I did it. The same way terrorists take responsibility. They say we are the ones that removed that head. David removed the head of Goliath and lifted it up. I'm the one who did it. God will do certain things and leave his signature and say, I did it. Hallelujah. Before we quickly pray, what does it take to experience the rain? We've told us what will happen, what the rain brings. What does it take to experience the rain very quickly? Number one, genuine hunger for more of God you want to experience the Holy Spirit as the rain this year it's not just as a prophetic word Isaiah 44 verse 3 very quickly genuine hunger for more of God that rain will only flow to those who are hungry those who are thirsty those who are serious with God he said for I will pour water upon who him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground in that similitude i will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring you must be hungry you must be desirous for more of god you must be desirous that's what it takes you must have genuine hunger number two you must have a determination to see his kingdom come the rain does not just come for nothing. The purpose of the rain is for the harvest. The purpose of the rain is to introduce a new season. You must have a determination to see his kingdom come across lives, across territories. That means if the priorities of the kingdom are not an important thing, you don't need the rain. Why do you need the rain? If you do not have a determination. To see his kingdom come so you must be determined that this year my partnership koinonia my partnership with god to see his kingdom come will be uncompromised number three what does it take to experience the rain prayer say prayer heartfelt continual prayer zechariah chapter 10 please verse 1 heartfelt prayers you want to see the rain you must pray it you pray down the rain Zechariah chapter 10 Zechariah 10 verse 1 we have it everybody read one two read stop he said do what ask don't wish he said the moment you sense the season has come start asking ask ye of who the lord the owner the owner ask him and say lord this is the season let the rain come he said ask ye of the lord rain in the time of the latter rain so shall the lord make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Listen, listen. We are going to ask. Because he said we should ask. This is the season of the rain. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening And everyone who calls on Jesus They will be saved He said, ask for the rain 
Zaria is our territory, it's our jurisdiction. Hallelujah. We must pray and say, Lord, give us the keys of this city. Give it to us. In this season of the rain, we ask for the rain. Massive salvation, massive prosperity, massive signs and wonders. A demonstration of the spirit that will make us walk like gods upon this city. Hallelujah. More grace, fresh anointing upon the messages. Fresh anointing upon the people increase of all sorts numerically spiritually all these things are the things that come with the rain testimonies and miracles for people that in this year the barren will take their children that in this year many people's situation will change these are the things that happen when the rain comes hallelujah james let's look at an example of one person who prayed and the rain came james chapter 5 please Oh, I already feel the anointing of the Spirit. My goodness. James. James chapter 5. We'll read verse 16. And 18. There's no need reading verse 17. He said, Confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye might be healed. Let's read the second clause. Are you ready? One to read. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. And let's see an example. Verse 18. He said, And he prayed again. He had prayed. And the heavens were shut and there was no rain. And when it was now time for the rain to come, what happened? He went back and the Bible says he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And as a result, the earth brought forth her fruit. So we are going to be praying. He said, ask ye rain. Ask ye rain. Whenever you see clouds forming, it tells you rain wants to come. That's why he began to pray. And he told the servant, go and check. The servant said nothing. He said, I will still pray. But when he saw clouds forming, he said, that is it. That is it. Pray. And the heavens gave rain. Financial rain. Spiritual rain. All kinds of things. We are going to see the hand of God in a very mighty way. God is going to lift us and exalt us in ways that will honor God is going to make a spectacle out of us. And the goal of this first meeting tonight is to bring us into agreement. Because you must agree. That's the purpose of this little exhortation. To bring us to a point where you say, Lord, that is it. I, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it for my life. I refuse to argue. It's my season. Not koinonia season. It's my season of the rain my season of not a rain the rain i have exact expectations we are going to be praying and you're going to be telling the lord as far as it depends on me i'm ready to play my own role just supply the grace and i tell you for many of you january will not end because he said he will bring that rain in the first month beginning from the first month many of us will begin to see things happen is 16 days and, and it does not take time when rain comes it's an avalanche it may take time to see the formation but if the cloud be full of rain except they are not full he said they empty themselves upon the earth hallelujah and so we trust God that he will reveal himself there will be such an outpouring Upon the campus, there will be outpourings of the Spirit. Outpourings everywhere. That from this place, like, 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 like infernos of fire, it will shoot to territories. One of, my, one of my goals this year is that all of the external ministrations that God will grant me grace, I want to take this rain to those territories. Hallelujah. My focus this year is to take this rain to territories. There are people that must catch this rain. 
Hallelujah. I will be a dispenser of this rain. A dispenser of this rain. That you step into a place and you cause bright clouds to be open. And rain, rain just comes upon people. Unlimited breakthroughs. I told God, I said, I'm, I'm more than ready. I am I'm more committed to this work like never before. We're having our retreats tomorrow. The leaders and the workers in the house. And part of the many things we're going to be discussing is how to refire ourselves to position ourselves first to receive of this rain and to be dispensers of this rain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so the Lord is going to grant us grace. We are going to do three things very quickly before we conclude this service. Number one is we are going to pray. And I want everybody to participate inside and outside. I know that there are some of you, there's no space all around. Don't worry find a corner and pray. This is about your life. We are going to be praying. All of the seven expectations become your expectations for the year. We will pray it. And we will pray for grace. That dimension of the spirit to be able to play our own part. Hallelujah. And after that I believe that God is going to release upon us the supply of his spirit to ignite this grace. It's an anointing service. Rise upon your feet. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to thank the Lord for this word. Give him thanks. Give him thanks everywhere, inside and outside. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your prophetic word. It's my season of the rain and outpouring of the dimension of the spirit upon my life. I thank you. Hallelujah. Your voice and pray. Lord, I receive it. I receive it. It's not just a word for koinonia. I receive it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. Hallelujah. Pick up your notebooks. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray all those seven expectations. If you can help us, media, fine. If it's down, no problem. Hallelujah. Those seven expectations from massive salvation of souls, one by one, salvation of, of souls, increased love and hunger for God, access to mysteries, multiplied spiritual power, dimensions of wealth, restoration, judgment. One by one, you're going to personalize it for yourself, for your family. 
Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please take it seriously. Lord, a harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. Let the rain bring sex salvation. Let the rain bring transformation. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we travel around the regions of this nation, as we travel even beyond the borders of this nation, thank you, salvation, the rain, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for a new dimension of financial prosperity, a new dimension of wealth and abundance upon my life, upon your house, upon Koinonia. We step into fresh levels. We tap into the mystery of divine supplies. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every family. I pray for every koinonia member. They are stepping into abundance. 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 
Lord, you will restore. You will restore. Restore destinies. Restore opportunities. Restore anointing. Restore mantles. Restore visions. Restore dreams. Restore graces. Let there be restoration. Don't be tired. Pray. So take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, Lord, we demand a restoration of all the years that the Kanka worm has eaten, the Palma worm. We command a resourcer of opportunities that have been lost. We declare judgment, judgment, the rain will bring judgment upon evil doers, judgment upon wicked men, judgment. Hallelujah. The seventh thing we say that will happen is that God will bring judgment. Hear me. There are men who have tied down the counsel of God over families. There are powers, there are forces that tie down the destinies of men. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Still on that point. The Lord, as the rain falls, these powers, these forces, we command judgment. They must crumble because I must rise this year. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a believer. Oh yes, the forces of darkness, ancestral forces, covenant, yokes of bondage. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in full. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in full. Therefore, we lose him back on the ground of the substitutionary sacrifice. On the ground of the Lord Jesus, we need him back. And there will be judgment upon the hands of wickedness. Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we cry for a supply of grace as we start the year, I'd like you to mention one thing that you know you need this rain to do in your life. Hallelujah. There are many things and we have prayed about some of them. But peradventure there are expectations that many of us have. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I make a demand. This is the season of the rain. This and that must happen in my life. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray. Outside, make sure you're praying. Everywhere outside, make sure you're praying. Hallelujah. 
Aleluia. Aleluia. That rain must fall. Aleluia. But there are conditions. I'm about to pray for you. Aleluia. You cannot do spiritual things with your strength. You need a supply of the spirit. Hallelujah. And as we begin this year, freshness. There are many of us who must start the year on a good note. I know that for most of us here, we have been having different kinds of programs, fastings, personal fastings. Some, ah, I sense that. Oh my goodness. I hear the sound of physical rain in my ears. Physical rain. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray. Something will come upon you. This is how to start the year. Supply of grace. No laziness. That supply of grace. Hallelujah. Lift your hands please as I pray for you. Lift your hands as I pray for you. Inside and outside. I want to pray for you. For it takes his grace. It takes that supply of the spirit. To help you align to the conditions that will make the Holy Spirit reveal himself. as a rain. You have asked. But you have your part to play. And we have to pray. Lift your hands as I pray. Thank you Jesus. Lord Jesus I pray. That in a mighty way. You will come upon your people. You told us. That you will come to us as the rain. As the rain. And right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as I pray. Let that rain. In strange dimensions. And in strange proportions. Begin to fall on people. At the count of three. One. Two. Three. Let the rain fall right now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Let the rain fall inside and outside. Inside and outside. My goodness, let showers of rain. Lord, let showers of rain. Don't just stand watching people fall. Pray and say, Lord, I receive. Let the showers of rain fall upon everyone. The grace to pray and keep asking the grace we receive it oh lord fresh passion fresh fire the dew of heaven ah. hallelujah hallelujah keep the hands lifted up some of you will feel physical rain physical rain coming on you physical rain Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that those who need the refreshing, 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 the refreshing of the rain, the refreshing of the rain, let it wash away every failure of 2014. The refreshing of the rain, the refreshing of the rain, the refreshing of the rain, The refreshing of the rain in the name of Jesus the refreshing of the rain I command it I declare it the refreshing of the rain it comes upon you inside and outside the refreshing of the rain hallelujah now one last thing I'll do and then I'll prophesy and we're done listen Lift your hands. Please receive this. This will come heavy upon us. The Lord began to tell to me about this right from retreat. There is a grace that you need to run this year with. There's no time for me to begin to tell us some of the things that the Lord revealed to me. But now is the time. There is a grace upon this house. For everyone that is connected to run with it. And it's time to release it. I received it in the secret place. Just lift your hands. 
Father, you told me to stretch my hands and you will release that grace. As you showed me in the secret place, right now I release. I stand in my office and I command, take the grace for 2015. Take the grace for 2015. Take the grace, the supply of the spirit, the supply of the spirit. I, re I release it as I received in the secret place. I release it for your academics, for your ministry, for your business. Take the grace inside and outside for your family. I release it. I activate that supply. I activate that supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands as I prophesy into your life for the year very quickly just. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that this year 2015 shall be for you a year of supernatural ease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace that brings ease. The grace that brings ease. I release it to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the spirit of prayer and supplication in 2015 let it fall upon your life now. Grace to pray. Grace to pray. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I declare that from January to December, every month becomes for you a fruitful month. In the name of Jesus. This year, they will not be going up and coming down. Your path will be as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, the dimension of favor that has been earmarked for you and for this house to walk in, we receive it and I release it to your life right now. Financial favor, marital favor. Hallelujah. I prophesy upon your life and upon this house every sinner every soul that must be saved through your hands this year let the rain supply grace to bring in that harvest in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you struggled with in 2014 I declare that in this year you will not even need to fight you will hold your peace and the Lord will fight for you. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone's finances. In this year, 2015, may the Lord do something in our lives that will cause our mouths to open with laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, we prophesy supernatural marriages this year. We prophesy supernatural childbirth this year. We prophesy supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare upon you, although it's a year of election, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I place a seal of exemption. You do not live by the sword and so you will not die by the sword. No one here Connected to this ministry, Kapata Labada, will be a victim of bomb blast, will be a victim of terrorists. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that as you travel all through this year, by air, on the road, you are protected. In the name of Jesus Christ, accident is far from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is the year when we forbid you from begging. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will be the one to bless many. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your academics this year. 
step into an unusual dimension of mental acumen. This is the year you will record five points. Ay, 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 ay. Oh my goodness. This is the year first class students will arise. Many of you will come with the spirit of Elijah and you will beat the standards you have set before. Hallelujah. I pray for you. This year, your hunger for God from January till December, nothing will kill that hunger. The same way you are excited about God, that's how you'll be excited the last koinonia service. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone that mocked your God in 2014, that said if your God is alive, let him prove himself. I'm prophesying to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the mighty one of Israel will arise and speak for you this year. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands. Wave it to Jesus and give him thanks. Now keep standing. Very quickly, there are people here inside and outside. You've never made Jesus Lord of your life. This is a good time to start. Probably someone invited you. Maybe you're a new student. Maybe you're new in this city. Maybe you just came visiting. Or you've given your life to Christ at one time, but you have not committed yourself to be serious with spiritual things. And you're saying, man of God, this year, I mean business with him. Those two categories of people, please find your way to the front right now. Right now, wherever you are, inside and outside, don't wait for anybody to come. Rush and come to the front and I'll be ready to pray with you. Very quickly, those who are saying, this year, I mean business with the Lord. Please come and stand here. Celebrate them. They are coming. They are coming. The devil is a liar. Not after this prayer. Outside, I believe that there are many people. Leave your seat and come. It's called Koinonia. The place of intimacy. The place of encounter. You're saying, Lord, I want to start afresh with you. I'm tired of pretending I mean business with you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. No matter how far you are outside, there is still room for you in front. Make your way very quickly to the front. Hallelujah. Take everything that is of God very seriously this year. Praise the Lord. Those of you in front, lift your hands as I lead you to pray. You are not reciting a poem. You have to believe in your heart for your confession to make sense. For your confession to be able to bring you salvation. So say after me, Lord Jesus, I truly believe in you. I make you the Lord of my life. I believe you died for me. And you rose again for my justification. I confess your lordship and I receive your life into my spirit. I declare from today that I'm a child of God. From today that I leave the past and I contend for the future. I declare that every lifestyle and every habit that has tied me down this year, I make a fresh start in the name of Jesus. Now keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, there is no one who comes to you that you will cast away. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that these salvations will be genuine and these commitments will be genuine. I curse every power. Right now, I curse every spirit. There are some of you here, there are powers that are tying you down. And stopping you from making progress. I command that they leave you now. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus. Thank you so much for making this decision. Now I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just see the gentlemen waving their hands there. Just at our back. I'd like you to follow them. They will have your details. Welcome you more warmly. And give you some instructions. Koinonia celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we take the announcements, 
Can you help me celebrate Pastor Jakes and Bishop Stan? These guys are so busy now, so having them around to start off the year with us is a great blessing. Thank you guys. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, before we end, I'll come and just speak blessings upon the house. Um, now, all those who are worshiping with us for the first time, what a, what a blessing, what a blessing. And this is to encourage every one of us. The Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. Make up your mind that this year you will never come for Koinonia alone. Hallelujah. We have prayed you are an evangelist. Hallelujah. You are going to invite your friends, invite your loved ones, and so many people to partake of what um, the Lord is doing in your life. So let's have those who are worshiping with us inside and outside. If this is your first time, please make your way to the front. We want you to feel welcome. We love you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Make sure nobody sits close to you who is worshiping with us for the first time. No matter how shy they are, encourage them. Encourage them. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. You can do more than this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Thank you for making our time to come. We're here every Friday, and God is doing mighty things in our lives. I guarantee you that you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, something will happen to you that will change your life radically. Praise the Lord. We want to pray for you. There is a blessing and when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and let's prophesy. Remember, you are anointed. So stretch your hands and speak over their lives. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. You become passionate about spiritual things from today. Every weight upon your life, we command it to be removed. We declare that from today your hunger for God increases and you will